Good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Jeannie Smith, Senior Manager of Communications and Community Relations for the Northeast Ohio Regional Sewer District. Uh, we'll give everybody about one more minute to get in and then we'll get started with this morning's conversation. Thank you for joining us. And yeah, the recording will be available um, afterwards. Someone had just, oh, thanks, Jen. Uh, good morning, everybody. Again, my name is Jeannie Smith, Senior Manager of Communications and Community Relations for the Northeast Ohio Regional Sewer District. I would like to thank you all for joining us this morning to talk about sponsorships and um, media partnerships for 2022. On the uh, Zoom call today, I have my colleagues, Jennifer Elting, Senior Public Information Specialist, as well as Jessica Schutte, Community Relations Specialist. Um, I do not know if John G. Uh, stayed on, um, but if so, we have John Gonzalez, who is our Manager of Communications, as well as our Social Media Extraordinaire. Uh, just a couple of housekeeping notes this morning. Jennifer Elting will be managing the Q&A. So if there are questions today, we ask that you drop them in the Q&A um, and she will be happy to address those questions. If there's anything that needs to be specifically addressed, um, certainly feel free to reach out to us afterwards. Um, otherwise, you can use the Q&A function to ask those questions. So let's get started. Again, this is the 2022 Partnerships and Sponsorships Meeting for the Northeast Ohio Regional Sewer District. And our agenda today will be a brief overview about us. So if you've been with us over the past couple of years, we've gone pretty much in depth in terms of the work that we do. We're going to scale back on that a little bit this morning. And we just encourage you, if there's any questions that you may have about the work that we do outside of what we share with you today, uh, please feel free to reach out to us. There's also a plethora of information on our website at neorsd.org. We'll jump into uh, to the 2022 key messages. Uh, we'll touch briefly on the budget and then we'll review the process and timeline. So I wanted to start today's conversation with a question. Did you use water today? I'm going to assume that you all did, whether it was by making a cup of coffee, taking a shower, um, maybe doing a, a load of laundry uh, this morning before you headed out, out the door or hopped in front of your computer. Um, and so if you do use water, you may ask that question, where does it go? We get this question a lot. What happens to that water that um, you use or others use? And the very simple answer is that it comes to us. Um, and so this is our, our, our uh, urban water cycle. You'll see here on the uh, top right, um, your home. And when you use that water, it goes through the system to a wastewater treatment plant. At the sewer district, we have three wastewater treatment plants, our Southerly plant in Cuyahoga Heights, our Westerly plant right on the border, right near um, Edgewater, and then our Easterly plant, which is located right on the border of Bratnall and Cleveland. Once that water is treated, it either goes to Lake Erie or the Cuyahoga River. And then the Cleveland Division of Water takes that water out of the lake and pumps it back to your house. So it just is a, a big cycle. It's, it's called the urban water cycle for a reason. Um, again, because it's just this process of taking water out of your home, cleaning it, putting it back into a local water body, and then uh, sending it back to your home. We uh, provide service to 62 communities in Greater Cleveland. Here's our service area map. It's a little hard to read on the screen and we'll be happy to share the presentation with you today so you have a better view um, of those communities that we serve. The various shaded areas reflect the different treatment plants that are served in this particular community. So again, 62 communities in Greater Cleveland, that is our service area. And so at the end of the day, the, the message that we want to convey is um, not only what we do and why what we do is important, but we want people to really understand that at the end of the day, water is life. 
it makes life happen, it makes civilized societies move, um, and it also helps to protect public health. So we are very focused on clean water as a water quality, um, it, you know, within the framework of water quality, but also in the framework of public health as well. And as we move through uh, the, the key messages, that's just something really important to keep in mind that this is the information that we're trying to convey to the customers and to greater Clevelanders um, as a whole. So our services, again, I mentioned our treatment plants, we uh, treat wastewater. We have, as I mentioned, three treatment plants. We uh, treat about 90 billion gallons of wastewater every year. So to put that into, into a um, easy to understand framework, that volume of water can fit Cleveland Brown Stadium about 113 times. So it's a lot of water that we clean over the course of um, a year. We also manage a lot of the pipes that um, are located in, in the greater Cleveland area. So we're sort of like the highway of the sewer system. Um, many of the local systems, so whether it's in Cleveland or Parma, all those smaller sewer pipes um, are flow into our big highway pipes and, that, and those highway pipes take all that water to our treatment plant where it's then cleaned. We also have crews that, are, that inspect our pipes pretty regularly to make sure that everything is running as it should be. Um, another core piece of our business is stormwater management. So we focus on flooding, water quality, erosion. Um, and um, that's a fairly new addition to our, our suite of services but an important suite of service um, nonetheless. And then in addition to that, uh, we have a lot of um, um, work around science and response. We have an industrial surveillance group that works with industry to ensure that they're not dumping chemicals into the sewer. Um, we also have teams that respond to chemical spills. We have a state-of-the-art laboratory that tests wastewater, um, rather, rather, I'm sorry, that the test beach water um, to ensure that our beaches are in tip top shape. And as I mentioned before, I'm not going to go into these in specific detail. You can find a lot of information on our website that really highlights the work. Um, but what we do is robust. And it, again, it's extremely important uh, to protect water quality and, of course, public health, as I mentioned earlier. So before I go into our key campaigns, Jen, I just wanted to see if there were any questions in the Q&A that I can address for the crowd. Nothing yet, but if anyone does have any questions, if you can drop them in the Q&A, that would be great. And that way everyone can see them and everyone can see the answers. Thank you. Great, thank you, Jen. So now I'd like to, to jump into our key campaigns for 2022. This is our 58th anniversary. We are extremely excited to be able to celebrate 50 years of people, programs, and progress. This will be a primary focus moving into 2022. And I'm going to give you a, just a, a brief overview of, of what the campaign looks like. Um, so we will have a monthly focus beginning in March that really highlights the work that we do. Uh, each month will be represented by an artistic emblem. And I'll give you an example here shortly of one of those emblems for April. And then there's going to be a key featured public event and a media event as well that will um, debut, uh, that will focus on the, the artistic emblem and then really help to tell that story for that particular month. So here uh, is the calendar of events and, and I'll go through all of them shortly, but we'll be kicking all of this off in March. And the theme will be sparking change. And our focus is going to be on the Cuyahoga River. For those of you who have been with us for a number of years, you may remember our campaign in 2019 where we celebrated the, um, the, the, the anniversary of the 1969 Cuyahoga River fire. That particular fire was the catalyst for the Clean Water Act and the sewer district's creation. So we'll be highlighting that anniversary and a lot of the historical events that occurred that brought us to where we are today. And again, as I mentioned, that will be represented by um, Artistic Emblem. As we move into April, we'll start to tell the story of the sewer district. So you'll see that the theme is going to be a healthier lake and streams. We'll, we'll, we'll highlight the investment that we've made in the collection system. And the number that we typically use when we talk about investment that we've made is $5 billion. But we know that that's a little bit higher given the recent investment that we've made in our systems. And we'll start with framing that content um, with information and, and with events that occurred in 1972 through 1982. And so I'm going to tease this out a little bit more 
Um, so that investment that we'll be focusing on is will be um, on the treatment plant process. Again, this is where the wastewater is treated. This is where we clean the water. And then we'll talk a bit about the investment that we've made in the collection system because that investment in the collection system really has helped us to get to a point where we are today. We'll also talk about some of the significant construction um, that really relates back to the collection system. Um, and then we'll talk about how all this ties into the anniversary of the Ohio EPA, who was also created in 1972. And as I mentioned, the anniversary of the Clean Water Act. We are looking at hosting a key media event in April that will um, allow media to come in and do some electrofishing. If you're not familiar with electrofishing, uh, we have a boat that goes out and um, they'll go into a body of water, they'll shock the fish, and then they look at the type of fish that are in that body of water. And that is an indicator of the water quality in that particular body of water. And I will tell you that the trend that we've seen over the past 50 years is that water quality has improved significantly. We're seeing many, many uh, fish, <clears throat> excuse me, fish species that are pollution intolerant. So these are fish that do not survive well in dirty water. And when you see fish that are pollution intolerant, again, it's a great signifier that water quality is really improving. Um, we're also going to host a key public event, and I do want to tease this out a bit. So for each month starting in April through August, we want to have a key public event where we unveil this artistic emblem. And um, we'll also, um, and so this is one of the artistic emblems for April. This is still in draft form, but we would like to unveil this at a specific event um, every single month. So whatever that artistic emblem is, we again, we want to have a very, very key event that unveils this piece of artwork. Um, well, at this particular event, we'll do something very special. Uh, it'll be either a t-shirt printing or an opportunity to print the emblem on a bag. And we'll be doing this every month with each of the uh, different pieces of artwork. Um, this is just a picture of maybe an opportunity that we'll present at this particular event. This is a picture of some uh, screening of t-shirts. So again, we're, we're still teasing this out, but we are looking for locations to actually house and to host um, the specialty event for every single month throughout the 50th anniversary celebration. So for those events that occur within that month that isn't that special day signature event, we will be passing out buttons that you see on the right that does have the artistic artwork. Um, you may remember from 2019, uh, the buttons that we had for our River Reborn, our Cuyahoga River Celebration. This is a very similar type of button. Uh, these were a big hit in 2019, so we thought we would repurpose that um, effort in 2022 we, with these different pieces of artwork um, as we celebrate 50 years of, uh, of success. So Jen, any questions on the 50th anniversary? Okay. And so this will, these will be our themes for the remainder of 2022. As I mentioned, we're kicking this off in March and we'll be uh, wrapping up the messaging in August all of this will culminate with our Clean Water Fest in September. Um, so as I mentioned, April is Healthier Lake and Streams and May will be focusing on recreation. Uh, we do, we, we kick off our, our beach testing at both Edgewater and Villa Angela in May. And so we thought that this was a great complement to that work that we do. Um, as we roll into June, we'll be focusing on Project Clean Lake um, and the theme will be protecting our lake and streams. And so for those of you who aren't familiar with Project Clean Lake, this is our $3 billion infrastructure investment to, um, to mitigate what we call combined sewer overflows. So these are um, overflows that occur when it rains and it discharges uh, uh, combined sewage into the environment. So combined sewage is untreated wastewater and stormwater. We've been 10 years into our work under Project Clean Lake. We have reduced um, combined sewer overflows um, by 1.7 billion gallons, so a significant accomplishment over the past um, 10 years, but we still have some work to do, and we're going to highlight that in the month of June. As we roll into July, our, our theme will be resilience, and we'll be focusing on our regional stormwater management program, and then finally, we'll be wrapping up the um, campaign with a focus on our partnerships, so our partnerships with folks like you and other entities 
um, in Greater Cleveland. And so I, again, I wanna reiterate for each of these months, we're, we're looking for a very specific event to unveil that artistic um, emblem. So if this is something that you think um, you may be able to offer to us, please make sure you include that in your application and your proposal. So we'll move on uh, to scholastic outreach. We are very much interested in, in tapping into the younger generation. The way that we look at it, children are either going to be a rate payer eventually, or they could be really good candidates to come and work for us at some point. So we wanna make sure we're getting information to them um, at a very early age. And we work with very young kids to high schoolers, to college um, age folks. So if there's an opportunity to tap into that younger demographic, and bring our message to um, that particular demographic, that's something that we would be interested in as well. Um, so moving on, uh, another area that we're looking at is how people can be personally invested uh, in protecting the environment. So what specifically can they do to help protect, protect the environment? So we'll be focusing on two campaigns. The first is pitch those pills. So this would be a pharmaceutical collection. Uh, for those of you who aren't familiar with uh, the issues around uh, pharmaceuticals and wastewater treatment, we cannot remove uh, uh, pharmaceuticals from our wastewater. It's very complex and very complicated. So the education around this is to ensure that people are appropriately uh, just uh, getting rid of old pills that they may have sitting in their cabinets. Uh, the focus would be on seniors and um, parents. And then the timeline for this particular campaign would be April through October. Um, in the past, we have hosted pharmaceutical collections. So that's something that we would be very much interested in. Obviously, we know COVID um, will play a role in, in um, any kind of in-person collections, but we are looking to get back into the swing of doing uh, collections and then just some overall education opportunities as well. Um, in addition to that, we have our Pick Up Poop campaign, we call it POP, and uh, you may notice that our pup looks a little bit different this year. So we, uh, we have changed our pup, we had an internal contest uh, to refresh our, our pick up poop campaign. This is a, a, a beautiful pup that belongs to one of our employees. And the campaign's focus is really on ensuring that people are picking up after their pets because if you leave anything on the ground, including dog poop, it could make its way into our local waterways and uh, impact water quality. So that is a campaign that we're, that we're focusing on moving into 2022. So the audience of course would be pet owners and the timeline, we, we really look at the warmer months um, because obviously people are out more often. And so the timeline for this particular campaign would be May through September. So Jen, any questions as of this point? Um, there is just one um, and someone would like to know for the um, 50th anniversary events, and Jessica may know the answer to this one, what is our specific space criteria? Um, if it's indoors or outdoors and if we need electricity for the screen mm -hmm. printing. Um, so actually, we're looking for either one. We're just looking for a place to uh, have our signature event where we can publicly say, okay, we will be at the, you know, the zoo or at the Asian Fest or somewhere um, where we're going to be unveiling that signature decal for that month. Um, we would have the t-shirt printing at that time. So indoors or outdoors doesn't really matter for us. Uh, we can print about 100 150 t-shirts in about an hour and a half. So that would be the cap of it, but we would still have a presence for that event, still offer other fun things to do. Um, so yeah, we don't have like a necessarily indoor outdoor thing, um, just as long as maybe we would have some coverage, be able to put, have a tent up or something like that, if weather's an issue. So uh, yeah, just, you know, if you, like Jeannie said, if you pitch us uh, something in your sponsorship application and you're assigned to the CCR representative, we can work with you on figuring that out. So Jessica, would you say a minimal space would be like 10 by 20 or 10 by 10? Is there a, a like a minimal space that we would need for that? Uh, I would say a little bit bigger than 10 by 20 because we would be bringing in an outside um, person to help us in the t-shirt printing. So we would need like our own space to have our table and some stuff and giveaways and activities and such, but then also a little bit of a bigger space for that person coming in to do this uh, t-shirt printing as well. 
Great. And yes, they need electricity. Um, and also their big thing too is we would need access to water because they use a lot of water when they're printing um, the t-shirts, how they do like the different things with it. So they did su suggest they have access to water if possible as well. Great, thanks Jess. And then finally, we are uh, really committed and have been committed for several years, but there's a, a real focus in 2022 and beyond to um, educate our customers about sewer bill savings. We have a, a slew of, of cost saving programs that we offer to our customers, including affordability, homestead, crisis assistance, summer sprinkling, and plumbing repair. If you're looking for specific information, again, I would encourage you to hop onto our website. Uh, for this year, we're, we're really zoning in on affordability, and there was an excellent article that came out this morning on the land that focused on uh, our, our, our affordability program. So a couple of points about that particular program, it's a 40% reduction in a bill. It is income-based, and um, two notable changes to affordability this year include an increase in the number of participants based off of their income. So there's a um, an income level that we look at, um, and it used to be 200% of poverty level, and we increased that to 250% of poverty level. I don't have the exact numbers in terms of the dollar amount, but ballparking, when you're looking at 200% of poverty level, the, the household income for that particular level would be about $57,000. By increasing it to 250, we increase that income threshold to about $65,000. Uh, so again, it, it, it increases that, uh, that base income and makes more people eligible to participate in affordability. We also added renters to our program. Uh, we have identified about 20,000 renters that would be eligible for our affordability program. And so we're actively reaching out to those individuals now, but we need your help to do that. Um, we have a goal between now and 2026 to increase overall participation in our programs by 10,000 participants. So it's a, it's a, a pretty significant increase and we're looking at all venues to ensure that people know about these programs. And then finally, uh, our, our big signature event that we're so excited about, we have not been in person for Clean Water Fest uh, for nearly three years, obviously due to COVID. It is coming back in full force on Saturday, September 17th from nine to four in Cuyahoga Heights. Uh, this is at our facility that's just up the hill from our Southerly Wastewater Treatment Plant. If you haven't had an opportunity to attend the Clean Water Fest, it's a, a fun family, free, family event that includes about 70 plus vendors. Um, we have seen upwards of uh, 3,000 guests attend the event. And essentially we have a number of our district uh, departments out talking about the work that they do. So it could be our treatment plant, plant, our treatment plant folks, our sewer maintenance folks. Um, we have folks from our finance department to talk about bills. It really runs the gamut. And then we tap into folks like you to also come out and share your, your information and talk about the work that you do as it relates to um, you know, water quality or what have you. Again, about 70 plus vendors are at the festival. It's free. And um, as I mentioned earlier, we have not been in person for nearly three years. So we want to ensure that the public knows about the event. We want to increase those guests by a little bit over 3,000 people this year. And um, it's just really important that we get back into the swing of things and ensure that people know that, that this event is available and it's free. And we want them to come out and talk with us about the clean water work that we do. So moving on, uh, those are our key messages for 2022. And if I didn't mention earlier, and I believe, I'm sorry, Jessica may have, I know I ran through this fairly quickly. We will have this presentation posted online. We will send a link out afterwards. So if there's anything that you may have missed, uh, again, certainly we'll send out the presentation so you have that readily available. Um, Jen, any questions about the, the messages for 2022? nothing yet, but if you do have any, please feel free to drop them into the Q&A for me. Thank you. So the question we always get, of course, and understandably, is what is the budget? 
Uh, we, relatively speaking, don't have a, a very large budget. We're proposing a, a budget of six hundred thousand dollars for 2022. And it's typically broken down, um, as you see here, a, a good chunk of it is um, focused on media, so TV, radio, print, uh, any kind of digital media. Um, another chunk of our, our sponsorship dollars go to our year-long partnerships, and I teased out here as an example, the Great Lakes Science Center, the Great uh, Greater Cleveland Aquarium, and others. And then we, um, we have sort of a miscellaneous bucket for single events, so festivals um, in, in, and maybe one-off um, types of partnerships. So this is a, an overall view of our budget moving into 2022. So when you start to put your proposal and your application together, it's really important to think of um, how you can integrate messaging into the proposal. One thing that that we're not we're not interested in is just slapping a logo on something because that really doesn't mean a whole lot to folks. We want to be able to um, utilize our partnerships as a mechanism to tell our story. So we want to look for embedded messaging into programming. Uh, we've had for several years a, a partnership with Channel 3 where they have embedded some messaging around uh, water quality testing at the beaches into their newscast. Those are things that we really like because it's, um, it's a good way to convey information relative to the programming that you're offering to uh, viewers or listeners or participants. We really like value-added opportunities. You know, we're a government entity, and so any way that we can stretch our dollar is, uh, is good. Uh, you can either tie that into any kind of media that you may have purchased or some events that you have planned where we can come out and set up a, a, a booth and be able to inter, in, interface with, um, with, with the public. We're very interested in social media and any kind of inclusion in newsletters. I don't know how many of you follow our Twitter. I hope it's all of you. Um, I will tell you that I think our social media channels rival both public and private um, entities. We're very interactive and we really see it as a tool and a mechanism to really reach a significant portion of the population. We also like social media and digital buys. Um, you know, geofencing, geofarming, any way that we can target our customers digitally is something that we're very interested in as well. You know, as I mentioned, um, you know, we're really not looking for logo soup. So again, we're not interested in our in our logo being on the back of a t-shirt and that being the entirety of the sponsorship. Um, as I mentioned previously, we are looking for maybe on-site exposure, um, incorporating messaging into sponsorships, and again, social media newsletters. So not a whole lot of difference between um, the event and program sponsor and some of the media sponsorships. At the end of the day, we just want you to be creative and, and help us tell our what we think is a great story, but it can be a little bit complicated. There's a lot of technical information that we have to share and we have to boil it down into easy ways for people to digest what it is that we wanna share with them. So as far as the application process, I first wanna make sure that um, everybody understands they need to be a registered vendor to do any kind of business with the sewer district. I will send this link out um, when I send out the, um, the presentation, but the very first thing you should do if you haven't done so already is ensure that you are a registered vendor. If you are a registered vendor, I would just check with our purchasing department. And again, that link is here to ensure that your information is up to date. If you have changed names um, or if there's any significant difference um, in your business, you'll need to update that with our purchasing department. You need to complete an application online and submit to our outreach at NEORSD. We'll send out the application. I do have a link here. Um, Jen modified it, so it's a little bit more fluid and easy to use, but you will need to complete an application and submitted to outreach at neorsd.org. So again, two things uh, that are important to focus on is registering as a vendor and then completing an application. Once we get that application in, you will be assigned a CCR point person um, and CCR stands for Communications and Community Relations. Um, I think many of you already have a point of contact and if you don't, one will be assigned to you. If you're approved, you'll receive a confirmation email 
In that email, you receive a recap form and some other um, other information. Uh, you will need to complete a recap form at the completion of the sponsorship. And that re the recap form typically consists of proof of, of performance. We need to make sure that everything that has been proposed in the application um, has been delivered. <clears throat> in addition to that, you'll be assigned a PO, a purchase order number. This purchase order number needs to be included on any invoices moving forward. It helps our wonderful Valeria Davis help to match um, um, the invoices to uh, your particular information in the system, and it helps to expedite payment. And then um, in addition to that, I mentioned the uh, recap form. Uh, we do have a new logo. So you may see that our presentation from a color perspective, from a font perspective, looked a little bit different than the previous years. That's because we went through a rebranding and uh, we did change our logo. So please ensure that you're checking with us to make sure that you have the correct logo. You will see the correct logo in the bottom left of this particular presentation. Hey, Jeannie, can I just mention something real quick? Yeah, go ahead. Um, for those of you who don't know, because I know I've been getting a lot of questions, um, Ebony Hood, who was uh, a community relations specialist in our department, left the district um, to go on to doing her own thing. Um, so we're really sad that she's gone. But um, if you have questions, if you are an Ebony uh, assigned person, you can always reach out to me and I can help answer those questions. Um, and we will be hiring a new community relations specialist um, here within the next couple of weeks. So if you see a new name, um, I could do some introductions for you guys. But in the meantime, if you guys have questions, please uh, reach out to me and I can um, hopefully help in answering those questions for you. Thanks, Jessica. And then finally, the timeline, you can start submitting applications today. If you do have a time sensitive request, please make sure you note that in the application. So for example, if you kind of have an event that uh, is scheduled for the middle of February, please let us know so we can pull that out and take a look at it. Um, again, I, if I haven't said it enough already, please make sure that you are a registered vendor. And I, again, I'll send out that information in terms of the contact information for our purchasing department. And then finally, our budget is not approved for 2022. It will go to our board of trustees on Thursday, March 17th. After that point, that's when we start to really um, process the applications and um, uh, move on our sponsorships for the rest of the year. So until um, March 17th, our budget is not approved. Um, but once March 17th um, comes and goes, and if the board approves our budget, then we can start to process a good chunk of, of the applications that are coming in. And then finally, uh, so your contacts would be either me, Jen, or Jessica. And as Jessica noted, our, uh, we have an open community relations specialist position. We're wrapping up interviews today uh, with the hope of offering the position to um, the, one of the candidates next week. So that position will be filled, um, as Jessica mentioned, in the next several weeks. And so anybody who worked with Ebony will likely be assigned this new community relations specialist. And with that, I am done for the morning. Um, I am happy to answer any questions that are in the chat um, or in the Q&A rather, if there are any questions that pop up afterwards, particularly around the events around the 50th anniversary, I certainly reach out to either Jen, Jessica, or me, we'll be happy to answer any questions. Um, until then, as soon as we get off this call, pr probably later on this afternoon, I will be certain to send out the links to some of the important information that I discussed in the presentation, including information to our purchasing department, as well as a um, link to the presentation and the application. Jeannie, I just wanted to address one of the questions that um, Jane from Upcycle sent in. Um, if you want to be a vendor, a registered vendor, or a vendor at the Clean Water Fest, um, please reach out to me um, and I can help. And I'm going to be sending out the external exhibitor form to those that we've used in the past. Um, but if you have specific questions about the Clean Water Fest and being a vendor with us, please feel free to reach out to me and I can help um, answering those questions for you. And there was also one that said if there was a deadline for the applications, um, I would just say sooner than later, even if your event isn't until July or August, um, you know, our budget only can go so far. So if you wait till like August to give it to us, we might not have the funds available. So, you know, we don't mind processing something that's for now, or I'm sorry, now that's not till a later date. 
You know, and, and COVID will drive a lot of our decision making at this particular point. Obviously, we all have been in this very odd space of, you know, hurry up and wait, hurry up and wait. Um, and, and so some decisions may be delayed just based off of how we're seeing COVID um, progressing. And again, if you have an event um, that's going to be, you know, in February, I know we have Black History Month, so we get a lot of uh, good events going on. Please send in your application as soon as possible so you can be considered for uh, those events. And like Jeannie mentioned, make sure you put in there that this event is for, you know, February or whatnot. Um, so we know that that's more time sensitive than others, maybe. Okay, any other questions? Nothing in the Q&A, but we will stay on the line for a little bit. If you have any questions or you need to talk with any of us, we'll be here for a little bit. Um, just, yeah, stick on the line and, and we'll be here for a little bit. Thank you, everybody. All right, I don't see any more questions coming in, um, but if you do have any, if anything pops up, um, please shoot us a note at outreach at neorse.org. And that way all three of us will see the message and we will get back to you ASAP. Thank you everybody so much and we hope to talk to you soon. Thank you.